Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen to this new episode of the book club we have with us tonight a very distinguished pakistani writer and we will be focusing on the work of this major pakistani novelist and we will also ask questions about how audiences have reacted to her writing how they have uh, read her work admired it and also how she has served as a role model for a younger generation of uh, pakistani writers so without making it uh, very mysterious let me welcome Babsi Sidwa, our very own dear novelist who is with us and uh, in the conversation we are joined by Amina Sayyid, OBE, the Managing Director of uh, Oxford University Press and she has published the Babsi Sidwa Omnibus and uh, let me also welcome uh, Tayyaba Habib who is uh, uh, one of the uh, main moving spirits shall I say in the, the publishing house which has bought new editions of uh, Babsi Sidwa's book. So thank you very much for being uh, with us. And uh, Babsi, let me again welcome you and uh, let me remind the audience that you are a well-known uh, author of uh, five novels uh, which are very well-known. The latest, of course, is Water, which is based on the Deepa Mehta movie. And also, let me not forget your book, uh, The Beloved City, which is an anthology of writings about Lahore, which you call The Beloved City. And you have recently uh, been uh, launching your brother, the late Minu Bhandara's uh, book of uh, selected writings. So we'll talk to uh, uh, you about all of these books. But I would like to ask you uh, about your beginnings. How did you turn to writing? I'm sure you've been asked uh, this question before, but it's a question worth asking again and again. How did you start as a writer? Well, you know, I had not uh, written anything really except for a few essays. and. Uh, on my honeymoon, I went to the Karakoram Highway. Mm -hmm. It was being built by the army, and I was invited there. My husband was invited there. And once I was there in the absolute wilderness, tribal territory of the Kohistan area, I heard the story of a little girl from the Punjab who had been brought there. She was married across the Indus River. And then, this happened about a month before I was there, right. she ran away. I don't know what befell her and how she dared to run away in those mountains that don't have a single path, no pagdandi, no uh, vegetation, not even a blade of grass in those mountains. And she ran away and by some instinct, she was there for two weeks running, she found the bridge, which was just made out of rope, you know, on the Indus. But, you know, she was obviously bought. Okay. Huh? And uh, so she was as though somebody's bought something and then stolen herself. So it was like a Cadillac running away by itself, you know. So the crime, the punishment to fit that crime was death. And the entire little uh, family, Kabila, you know, which compromised 25, 30 people, mm -hmm. they're very small villages. And uh, somebody was there, these are infallible hunters, and they found her body, her neck severed in the water. So this is a real life incident which inspired yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So when I came back to Lahore from the mountains, I couldn't forget the beautiful, gorgeous scenery. Being in that area was like being through a mystic experience, you know. The tribals, again, hidden away by the mountains, but such a handsome people and mired in poverty, you know. And this girl's story, which to my mind reflected the story of all girls in the third world who have no control over their lives. Their fathers, brothers, everybody else seems to have control. So I thought I'd write a short story, but as I was writing, you know, I said, she must have parents. How did she meet the tribal? How did she live in Lahore and grow up? How, and what happened that made her run away? What happened during that Doran? So I, before I knew it, I was writing a novel. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is obviously you're talking about The Bride. Let me ask Amina uh, how she felt when she was reading The Bride. Uh, how, as a reader coming across this, uh, the story of this girl, do you also think that it's generalizable to uh, the story of many girls from our part of the world? I think so. It, it's, it's really a very tragic and a very moving story written with a lot of sensitivity. And I think, uh, yes, it really uh, it represents the position of women in Pakistan. In, in certain areas of Pakistan where I think th the most important thing that they're deprived of is uh, choice. They have no control over their lives. They can't choose how they want to live their lives. 
and if they're leading <coughs> miserable lives, they can't even choose to walk away from them. I see. Because you know, as uh, Babsi showed in this book, that this is what happens when they try to run away. They are their life is taken uh, taken away from Certainly. them. Certainly. Let me ask this question also from Tayeba, who has brought out this beautiful new edition of The Bride. How do readers react to this story? Does it upset people? Are they shocked by it? Or do they admire the beauty of the writing? Just like Babsi was admiring the mountains. Yeah. Actually, whoever I've spoken to, they love The Bride. And um, they can see our society and uh, the dilemma of uh, our women in the bride and in a way they do relate the you know that people can relate of course they can relate to it because it's us so it is a very powerful book it's a very compelling book also a very tragic one it's very tragic yes of course but they, it has that power there is a power in, in her work in Babsi's writing and you also keep on wishing that something could save that girl from a yeah. fate that you see it's almost yeah. like a chronicle of a death foretold <laughs> no I but I changed the ending <coughs> I changed the ending yes. because when I came to the ending, I was crying so much, you know. So I said, this poor child has gone through so much and then she dies. So there are two endings. She has a vision of herself being killed by her husband and then suddenly, you know, she is rescued. So she lives, barely, but she lives. But Babsi, how traumatic for you mm -hmm. during your honeymoon to be told the story and then write this I mean how did you feel about uh, it you know I felt I mean it didn't disturb my honeymoon but uh, I was enchanted by that area you know mm. it was magical for me mm. and somehow this story fitted there and it fitted in the wild tribal atmosphere you know I had sympathy for the tribes because mm. they lived such hardship lives you know so when yes. I came, I felt I had mm. to tell the story. So I'm sure it also started your honeymoon into uh, <laughs> novel writing. Yeah. And uh, this yeah. is a, obviously The Bride, which is uh, your first book. But I'm saving my favorite uh, Sid Babsi Sidwa novel. Mm. And I'm going to talk about it uh, when we come uh, back after the break. But I want to ask a question uh, from our readers that I would like them to think about and name your, fo uh, your most famous, your well-known book, which really established your reputation. It's a book named after a bird. And uh, we all know that uh, birds are not to be eaten, but which bird is not to be eaten in this uh, book? And also, let me give you a hint that a small art gallery in Lahore is named after this uh, Babsi Sedwa novel. So think about this novel, and we will take a quick break and come back to the conversation with Babsi Sedwa. Thank you. 